Yo, what's going on everyone? Welcome to Path to Enlightenment. Uh, thank you for all the viewers. Thank you for all those that have contacted me on social media. Thank you for all of the subscribers, those that have liked and disliked and everybody that is just interacting with my channel. Um, I want to do this quick video where basically I talk about overcoming psychosis naturally. Um, so psychosis is defined by somebody who is experiencing uh, delusions, uh, hallucinations, basically somebody that is having an episode of losing touch with reality. So reality in their mind literally crumbles and well, this is the best way that I've heard um, psychosis being described. Psychosis is like a dream. So you know when you're sleeping, we all go to sleep, and when we sleep, we experience weird dreams, we experience crazy dreams, we experience dreams that are just completely defy the laws of nature, completely defies the laws of reality, dreams that are just unreal, crazy, bizarre, weird, we're doing weird things, we experience weird things, da, 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 da. but the good thing about when we dream at night is that when we wake up, bang, all of those dreams, they disappear and you're in tune with the real world and you're able to differentiate or you're able to say that, oh, that was a dream or that was a crazy dream. Babe, that was a weird dream I had. Da, 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 da. Listen to what happened. Da, da, da. So when you're experiencing psychosis, you experience dreamlike symptoms even when you're awake. So if you can imagine that, like some... Some dreams that you have at night, they're horrifying, they're scary. You wake up in a panic, you wake up with the night sweats, you wake up feeling terrified. So imagine people experiencing that on a day-to-day, -day, during the day, you know, when they're not sleeping, like now kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? Uh, so that's quite a scary thing to imagine and fathom, especially if you are somebody that has not experienced a psychotic episode. Um, now, of course, within psychosis, there is different um, levels to it. There are people that are severely psychotic. And there are people that experience mild to moderate symptoms of, of psychosis and they're still able to function and get around with their day-to-day -day lives. But they, they're experiencing these symptoms. Uh, some of you might not even know that because the person experiencing psychosis has actually learned to just carry on their day-to-day -day lives experiencing what they're experiencing so i'm not a medical doctor i'm not a psychiatrist i'm not a psychotherapist i'm not any of those things so this is just simply my view and my opinion um into what i think could work and does work for a lot of people so just like how i mentioned um people that are experiencing a dream at night they're able to wake up and realize that wow well, that was a dream i had in my opinion people that are experiencing psychosis have to try and get to a place where they're in tune with the present where they're in tune with what's real with what's logical with reality they have to get in tune with that and there are many ways that people can achieve that by um, you know, a life of, uh, you know, uh, meditation, a life of looking after yourself, a life of exercise, a life of uh, living a good diet, uh, a life of being around friends and family, because when you're around friends and family and you suffer with a mental illness, that your friends and family will be able to help you, especially if you're experiencing psychosis, they will be able to help you to learn what is real and what is not. So if somebody experiencing psychosis has a specific delusion, if they're around their friends and family and the majority or all of the friends and family are saying, no, that thought you're having or what you're experiencing, that's not true. Or it's not true for us. We're not experiencing that. Then you're able to tick that box and say, okay, what I'm, exp what I'm experiencing is a delusion. So, um, yeah, like just like s s you can wake up from a dream and recognize that what you just experienced was a dream, no matter how real it feels, the same rules apply with psychosis is to get to a place where you're having these experiences, these experiences, you're having them, you can't deny them, you're feeling them, you're having these delusional thoughts, you're having these hallucinations, uh, hallucin hallucinations. 
uh, you're experiencing these things. But if you can get to a place where you're able to differentiate the psychotic symptoms to yourself, to the self, to, to you as a person, then, then you're on a good path. You're on a good path because even though that will not take away your experiences and that will not take away the symptoms you're experiencing, but you will able to be in tune with what's real, with reality, and you'll be able to say, look, even though I'm experiencing this, even though I'm having this delusion, even though I'm having these thoughts, it's more than likely that it's not real. And the reason I say it's more than likely is because somebody who is experiencing psychosis will find it very difficult to know for sure that something isn't real because their symptoms feel so real. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? The, the, the psychotic symptoms and experience feel so real. That's why I'm saying it's more than likely. But the more you get closer, the more you get centered into reality, the more you look after your body, the more you look after yourself, the more you invest into yourself as a person, you're going to get more connected and more grounded. The word here is grounded. When you're really deep rooted and grounded, yeah, yes, the psychotic experiences can come, the symptoms can come. The more grounded you are, the more you can look at the delusions, the hallucinations, the disorganized thinking and say, huh, I'm experiencing this, but it's unlikely this is real. I'm aware that this is just the psychosis. I'm aware that this is just a mental illness. I'm aware that what I'm experiencing is just the symptoms of what is going on in my mind. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Overcoming psychosis naturally, I personally believe is doable again like i was saying earlier it all depends like for example somebody who is diabetic yeah somebody who is diabetic and is on the early onset stage of diabetes your gp will tell you to stop it developing into a full-blown di diabetes you can control and you can in fact even reverse the early onset of diabetes by exercise and diet. It's no different to mental illness. And that will prevent you from using medication to control the diabetes, right? It's the same with something as like psychosis. If you're on the early onset of psychosis, you can control it and you can reverse it by investing into yourself, by eating correctly by exercise <clears throat> yeah i'm not going to go into why these two are so important for mental health but you can just do your own research online into why fitness exercise and diet is so important for mental health um developing a life of uh, meditation uh, de developing a purposeful life a life that gives you purpose and meaning all of these things can prevent not just mental illness any illness from into developing something full-blown now, of course, there are people, again, I use the example of diabetes, there are people that have full-blown diabetes. And the only way of literally managing and controlling the diabetes is by being on medication. Um, there are some people that experience psychosis to the degree and to the point that they, they have to be on medication because the symptoms are so severe why does that happen? I don't have the answer. Um, why do people experience such um, intense psychosis? I'm not sure. I mean, it could be a, a, a mixture of things. I personally believe, and this is statistically correct as well, that drugs play a massive role in people ending up really, really bad. Um, I knew a guy who was psychotic, um, a guy that I went to school with, and... He, he literally fits that that category of, of of madness, of insanity. Like you would see him on the middle of the street, dancing in the middle of the road, talking to himself, shouting to no to people to shouting to the air as if somebody was there and no one was there. Um so he would fit that category of somebody who's like insane kind of thing. But then the times I've managed to speak to him and get like kind of half sense answers out of him. He was on drugs. He was on drugs. 
and he wasn't taking his uh, anti-psychotic medication. So then I think to myself, right, if he wasn't on drugs, if he wasn't smoking like that hard uh, drug skunk, uh, what's the other word? Um, there's a word for, for the weed out there, spice. So if he wasn't smoking all of that and then doing all the other stuff he's doing, as well as taking meds, would he be better? More than likely. If he was, if he had started doing these things earlier on in his life, would his psychosis develop into what it is now? Probably not. So there's always things you can do to prevent something from getting worse and you can always reverse things. Do you know what I mean? Um, so that's just my opinion. Like I'm saying, if somebody is unable to function without medication then it's a given you should take your medication do you know what i mean um and there are many people that operate on a very normal good life on medication and if meds work for you by your means take your medication um but yeah like i'm just saying there are ways especially if it's on the early onset of psychosis there are ways of um Preventing psychosis from getting worse and um, even reversing it. If you can live a life, right? If you can live a life where you're able to operate, able to hold down a job, able um, to do your day-to-day -day stuff, able to interact with your friends and family without taking antipsychotic medication, I would strongly suggest that. Do you know what I mean? Because what it is, is... By doing that, you're actually developing the strength of your mind because you're not actually using something to to blunt your emotions or to take your headspace somewhere else. You're actually training your brain to do things and to keep things moving regardless of what's going on up there. And of course, that will take time, that will take practice. But if you're able to live a life where you're able to operate and be grounded and differentiate the delusions or the the um the hallucinations if you're able to separate that from your grounded reality but yet they're still there that's a very good place to be because unfortunately there are people out there that are unable to do that um but i'm all about prevention but more than cure and if you're somebody who is experiencing mental illness prevention is better than cure Prevent things from getting worse by investing into your life, by investing into yourself, by surrounding yourself with positivity, with good things that will help you live a normal life, you know? Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope it's been edifying for you. Uh, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to the channel and share with your loved ones and friends, especially those that you know are suffering with their mental health. Peace.